So spiritual narcissism basically is when a narcissist uses faith or spirituality to manipulate, to control, to get, to get supply from others and to boost their own ego. When they use faith to manipulate, to get their way to become righteous and right in a situation when it's really taking part of a doctrine or part of a teaching in any faith or any bit of spirituality, right? And using that piece in the way that plausible deniability works, right? Where they use a piece of the truth or a piece of a teaching and then applies it to something unrelated but then if you disagree with them or if you call them on it, you are not calling them on it. You're calling the faith on it. You're calling the spirituality on it. So you, to combat it, to say you're gaslighting me using faith or religion or spirituality, you end up being told that you're the one thinking wrong. You're going against a faith. You're going against a spirituality. You're not acting very peaceful and you're not acting very whatever the teaching is or spirituality or spiritual belief is. You're going against it to disagree with that narcissistic person. They will throw everything at a person, everything from scripture, if it's a religious um, a narcissist in a situation where they're using religion, to spiritual ideals, to pretty much everything they will use everything good that they can find in the teaching or the faith or the religion or the spirituality and turn it against you to show how you are not that thing you are not good because you're not following xyz rules according to this spiritual teaching belief or religion and they are the only ones who are right in the situation and so basically they're using it to gaslight you and they're using it to twist words and the problem is they are attacking you at a level that is deeper than your psychology. They're, they're coming after the part of you that's connected to something greater than mankind, right? They're coming at you in a place where you find peace and solace, where you find comfort, where you feel connected to something bigger than yourself. It is incredibly toxic. And the thing is that you can see the hypocrisy that a spiritual narcissist lives. You can see that they are not living this teaching or spiritual belief or religion that they are claiming to be so, so superior in. And they actually are doing the opposite most of the time. And the thing is also, they will go into spiritual and religious community, show up as if they are the most pious or they are the most religious or they are the most spiritual or they are a teacher they're a guru they're a whatever right they'll show up as if they're that and the community sees them as that because they're charismatic often and they are believable because they do have the knowledge in their head of what the teaching spiritual belief or religion says they just are using that those words and that teaching or whatever against you or against whoever it is they're manipulating to get their way to be superior to be seen as the the most spiritual one in the crowd so let's talk about a couple signs of spiritual narcissists one is the obvious they use your spirituality against you they use all spirituality against you they weaponize the teaching the belief the religion or the spiritual practice and use it to manipulate you so number two thing they will bring you down using, again, spirituality, religion, or a teaching. They will use it to diminish you, to make you feel evil, dark, not, not good enough, not part of the group, not working hard enough at what it is you're, you're, you're learning or, or at your faith, right? That you aren't a good whatever the faith is, right? And as they bring you down, they're standing above you being greater than you. And that's giving them so much supply and so much feeding their grandiosity in this situation. You see, sometimes they can be complete covert narcissists and completely not egotistical, so to speak, in their life. Like they could be humble seeming or they can be more, more the quiet type or whatever. But when in this situation, their grandiosity comes out in the sense of their spirituality. So another, another sign, is that they will take any mistakes they make and filter it through the religion, spirituality, teaching, or, or, or otherwise, and, 
and then twist words or use partial truths or partial teachings or, or bits and pieces to put it together to look like that mistake was never a mistake. Like, or like their mistake is justified because they believe they are special in this situation. They believe that they are great, whatever it is within that spiritual or religious group, or they do the opposite. Sometimes they will use spirituality. For instance, I know of one that uses spirituality to manipulate his ex by every time he does something terrible, he will say, I know I'm a sinner, but I'm saved. And so therefore it's okay. Do you see what I'm saying there? It's not, that isn't, they're taking a teaching, they're twisting it to suit their needs and their ego requirements, right? Use the teachings to judge. They use it to cast judgment over you and basically Lord above you, right? With their higher elevated selves and cast judgment onto you so that you are now self-judging because it's not just them that sees it, it's some higher power, whatever your faith is, right? And it's completely evil, it's completely wrong. And they're doing this to manipulate and it can make people stuck in situations. People stay in marriages because of this. People stay long-term with narcissistic people because of this, because they are controlling the very thing that is like the essence of people's experience as a human that connects with something greater than themselves. It's really awful. So that's just a few things on spiritual narcissism. I'm Lise Colucci. And if you need any help with anything regarding coaching or group coaching, check out the information in every video, hit the thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.